Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail with more Scrolls action, where today I'm doing another Reddit Ladder League game, where I'm taking on Lan Marco, who is rated 1775, he's the second highest rated player in my pool. So this is going to be a fun, interesting matchup, and maybe I'll do better than I did against the last high rated player that I played before, but I am going with my standard Monogrowth deck, and Lan Marco is an energy player. So I tend to do pretty well in my energy matchups. I mean, it usually boils down to can I ramp up a little faster, but right now I get a Ragged Wolf in my hand, but I decide to hold on to it. I could Fertile Soil it later, but I don't want him to necessarily burn it right away. So I don't need that many Crimson Bulls. Sometimes I feel like I have too many Crimson Bulls in my hand, but Land Marco, this is his first match in pool play. So, and it's just kind of been an ad hoc trying to schedule your own games and see how that goes. But he does get the scatter marker, or the scatter gunner out first. I tell him briefly about my exploits with Joyful Rogue, which you all have seen by now. But I decided to take out the scatter gunner using the Crimson Bull Ragged Wolf combo. So take one thing off his board early because I don't want that guy to sit there. And he gets out of Gravelock Outcast. So I could potentially take that guy out pretty soon. I do get the Vetter out to try and ramp up just a little bit. So I can possibly put the Kim Folk. A veteran out. Right now I gotta be a little worried. He has five energy and he hasn't done a lot with it just yet and in fact he's sitting on cards. So I could use the veteran here. I could use the... I actually decided to keep the Bane. Maybe I should have kept the brother of the wolf. I don't know. But anyway I do happen to clear his guy. So I did get some first blood there on the totem and right now I have three creatures to his none. I did already sack one Quake, but there's a Cannon Automaton, something you don't like to see on turn 6, if you can avoid it. And let's hear the Cannon Automaton, uh, Landmark is asking about Joyful Rogue, which is growth, and he outdrew me, amongst other things, not just outdrawing, but outplaying. But even with the Armor 1 for a Cannon Automaton, Poison still does 1 damage. So while this guy won't be able to hurt him or plink away at him, as I'll see here, and this was where I go, oh, that doesn't work, that's right. I'll still be able to do damage. So see, I'm making discoveries every day. And he's going to go and put a destroyer out in front, which is very nice of him. So what do I want to do? I could put out a mangy wolf and not quite take out that, but I decide to sack to put the great wolf out. I'm going to say I'm putting the great wolf out at least. Let's see what I decide to do here. Looks like I'm trying to move all of my units out of the range of this destroyer. Because this is a post-commentary using the replay mechanic. And I did drop my Great Wolf probably in the wrong place. Yeah, the Thunder Surge is probably going to tickle me very well if he decides to do it right there. Which is unfortunate. You don't want to clump like that. At all. Especially with two Vetters. So there's the Inferno Blast. About just as good. Took out all of my... Uh, friendly units. Unfortunately for him, or unfortunately for me, I am going to be possibly feeling some pain here, but if I do drop the Ancestral Totem and the Ragged Wolf, I could take that guy out. I put, I could put the Kenfolk Veteran down, take that guy out, so I do elect to go for the Ragged Wolf. So that's going to do one damage, and the Poison will take out that cannon next turn. And then I can save all this, so there we go. Just a little bit of chit chat back and forth. Once again, I'm very impressed with how the players and scrolls are just so friendly, willing to talk. Not a lot of crappy trash talk like so many other online games. But yeah, my Wolfie just got violent dispersed, which is to be expected. That God Hand's really good for me to have, especially with the hand that I have. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of creatures out right now, or I don't have a lot of mana to use it. I'd like to have more than five by this point, but there's one totem down, there's a destroyer down. And there's me telling about my Violet Dispersal days. So here we go, just waiting for the turn. He gets a Gravelock Elder out, but look at... If that's all he can get out at this point, he has five cards, he has six energy. And I ditch a God Hand right away because I want to get a Great Wolf out and I want to get this Vetter out there. And right now I'm not doing a great job spreading my units because people are going to be touching. And we know how I feel about touching, but I do want to do at least some damage 
to the Elder if I can. So he could Thunder Surge and take out a few things here. He could take out the Ancestral Totem. He could take out these things. He could soften up these units, but he's electing the Iron Whip and Burn. So damage all around. And he takes out some of my units. Right now I have a bunch of guys who are not going to attack. Maybe I'll get lucky with the Sister of the Fox. And actually, even though the Kinfolk Brave would be very good there, I elected to ditch him, which turns out really well because I did get a Kinfolk Veteran, which ideally I'll play and go and take out this Gravelock, and here we go. Suddenly I'd really love to have a God Hand because, Jeebus, I can do a ton of damage. And there we go, Land Marco complimenting me on my draw. And this is where it's round 12. If I can keep denying energy what they want to do, I can really overtake the board. Like, he gets a destroyer, he iron whips it, and that manages to take out some creatures and weakens my wolf, but what's that going to do at this point? I can rally and get my people to attack. I can play the Sister of the Fox. Possibly get a better card, so I have a cheap god hand next turn if I want to use it. So... Let's see what I decide to do here. This game was played a little while ago, so I don't exactly remember what I did. Because I can't rally and Crimson Bull at the same time, but I can take out the Destroyer. So I get rid of the Crimson Bull. Interesting. And I decide to rally. The Unleash Inner Power is pretty good. I could use that on my Wolf to possibly end the game next turn. Or a few turns later. Let's see here, he plays another Gravelock Elder, so all of these things that he would love to have all at the same time. If I hadn't taken out some of his cards, which is my focus here, taking out as fast as I can, then there'd be problems. But I do Unleash Inner Power, and I Ranger's Bane him. So pretty much, if he wants to buff this guy, if he Iron Whips him, he's going to die. And that's a cool removal combo. Yeah, it's nice. The one downside is that it does take uh, 6 growth. So that's where Unleashing Her Power can be valuable. It is really expensive, but you can take out all kinds of things. But if he does Iron Whip this guy, he's gonna... Or there are cards he can play that'll get him to attack, but he can kill him too if he tries to haste him. So this guy's not going to do anything. I have a Rally that I don't need. I could Rumble to try and get things out. So what's it gonna be? Rumble! There we go. Don't Didn't even really need to do that, but I did anyway. Notice that I'm attacking the lane with the Hellspitter Mortar because, quite frankly, this guy's going to die, so he's low priority. And now I have a 3-3 Sister of the Fox. So next turn I can rally again and possibly take him out. And like I like to say before, this Monogrowth deck is a round 15 deck. I really just try and overwhelm my opponents as best I can. So I do have a God Hand that I can use. I can rally this turn, God Hand next turn. But... To be quite honest, I could potentially end the game here within the next turn or two, especially because of that bear paw. Sister of the Fox now beefy 3-3, so he puts out another automaton. He puts a potion of resistance on it, but God Hand's going to mean that I, all I have to do is play it, move my units up, and end the game. So there we go. That's match one. For some reason, I decided to go for the bottom area instead of the top if I can actually get my units to move. You can see me clicking there trying to get them to go. So there we go. He puts the Potion of Resistance. I get the God Hand, which you got to expect at this point in the game. In turn 16, I win the first matchup between this. So a guy who is rated about 100 points higher than I was at this point. But I do manage to eke out the victory, but very well played by Land Marco. But we did not just play one game. We played two. So let me do a quick pause while I load up the next game in this series. All right, so this is Way to Fail again with Game 2 versus Land Marco. I know some of you may think that's a jarring transition to go from pause to the next game, or that I could edit in some transition, but I do just kind of want to get this started because this is Game 2 of our Reddit Ladder League series, and Land Marco is once again going with his energy deck, and I am once again going with my growth deck. So it is a growth versus energy matchup. And you're going to see real quick that I get some cards that I really like in my hand early, but it's hard to play five growth cards with one growth energy. But he gets a dust runner out right away. That's a card I didn't see in his hand at all last time, so I don't know if he switched decks or he just sacked them because they were never very useful. But I do put my Wolfie out just to try and do one damage. Maybe I can pin him down. But yeah, their poor Wolfie is looking death right in the face. That's true, especially with a Copper Automaton. 
who will kill this guy before there's anything I can do about it. So, Wolf Bro's gone. Nothing I can really do. He's brave, gotta give him that. In fact, he's just gonna elect to do four idle damage and let the Dust Runner kill him. And there is the Hellspitter Mortar early to protect the Dust Runner. So that's a really good play because that guy may only have one health left, but that's all he needs to do damage. And his ability, if you don't know, is not just for units that have like three health or less total. If this veteran or whatever is, I, once again, I hate sacrificing these guys. I want to play them. But if, like, say the veteran drops down to three health, this Dust Runner can kill him in one turn. So I do want to barrage through the Hellspitter Mortar. And right now, Landmarko has good board control, but I do have some really good cards in my hand. Unfortunately for me, there is the Inferno Blast and there is the Dust Runner immediately knocking out my Hasted guy. So Rumble's not going to do me much good here. And I could play a few things. I like to play the Great Wolf there, just because getting two Great Wolves on the board is good. But right now, I'm, what I'm really worried about is can he do more tricks with the Dust Runner? Now that he's at 6 health, can he Violent Dispersal me? And he's talking about Potion of Resistance too, which is an amazing card. Something that I'd really like to use for this deck more. I did have a Mono Growth with Energy Splash in that I may try again. And actually looking at some streams, that does seem to be what some of the top level growth players do. So I think I need to just kind of figure out, do I have too many enchants? I don't want to be creature starved, but there we go. Dust Runner is going to do some work. And, oh, okay, he's going to clear my board. Yes, Hellspitter Mortar. I love those things. They screw me up all the time. But you know what? You can't really complain about it. It's a 1 in 15 shot. Sometimes you win against them, sometimes you don't. And there's a Quake for me, and I'm starting to get that it Quake itch, perhaps. And I could, I decide to go ahead and bane that. Because it's very unlikely that he's going to be able to kill the Sister of the Fox this turn. My Great Wolves are Hellspitter Magnets, so there's another Dust Runner. If he hastes him right away to kill the Sister of the Fox, I'll be a little sad. But there's two Hellspitter Mortars. I can I actually go ahead and go for the more cards. And it looks like next turn I'm setting up for a Quake. If I don't play the Kenfolk Brave, that's what that's going to be. So there we go. Can you smell the quake in the morning? Maybe. So Hellspitter Mortar, it has five attack, but it doesn't attack your idols. So do we get the quake? It's not my favorite card, but right now I'm behind and I gotta get back in. So ready, set, and boom. This guy has three health left. I can still play the Kenfolk Brave. Maybe I should have played something else because that Kenfolk's likely gonna attract some unwanted attention. He does have six energy. And it's one of those things where you find yourself in a game sometimes saying, you know what, I really hope this guy has no cards to play this turn, but with a Quake with five cards in his hand, there's plenty he can do. This guy almost gets health spat again. Because now I have some options here I could play with. I could play the Kinfolk Veteran. I could play the Veteran of the Wild. Probably don't need the Unleashing or Power or Mangy Wolf, but at this point I am going to clear his board, so my Quake did its job. I have stuff back on the board. I've kind of recovered. But he is just going to be able to burn straight away. And burn's nice because if it kills a unit, you draw a scroll. Gun Automaton's nice because right now he has my Vetter pinned in unless I do something about it. I could put a Sister of the Fox up, and right now I have 9 growth. I can play a lot of things. So Sister, hopefully he's going to card draw me something good. God Hand is not exactly what I want in this situation. Although it's not a terrible card. And then there's the mangy wolf that I've loved to use with one of my great wolves or one of my <laughs> veterans that were in my opening hand. But sometimes that's how the scrolls fall. And Landmarko gets a destroyer out. He's going to be able to probably do some good here, especially with the iron whip. So there we go. Two of my creatures gone right away before I could do anything. So do I god hand with the kind of lamest god hand I've seen in a while? I don't know. Damn super lucky draw. Let's see what this means. One, two, and God Hand. This is the God Hand of WTFness. At least I'm able to clear his board again. I'm not used to using God Hand without a bunch of creatures on the board, but that time is like better Quake, get the Ragged Wolf out. And once again, I've cleared his board. That's my constant goal is growth. Clear his board, clear his board, clear his board. 
But Landmarco's coming back here, and if I can't keep up the pressure, I'm going to be in trouble. However, I do get a Rallying and a Crimson Bull. I can't possibly take out one of his units. I can't take out a Scatter Gunner. But, wait a minute. There's the Mangy Wolf. There's the Rally. So I decide to save... I decide to pocket that for another turn. I could have possibly taken out both of those things if I played the Crimson Bull and the Rally as well. But right now there's a Gravelock Elder who is a little bit more of a threat and a Potion of Resistance and a Dust Runner. So that is a tough, tough, tough wall to crack. And maybe I should start focusing on idols here. Because right now that Scatter Gunner is going to kill some things if I'm not careful. Of course, why would I be careful? I get two Mangy Wolves in hand. Get a Kinfolk Brave down here. And that idol has one health. It'd be really great to take it out, but I don't want the Scatter Gunner just obliterating my units. So, whereas Energy has Violent Dispersal for some great creature removal, Thunder Surge for some good removal there of my two health units. And more removal from the Scatter Gunner here. Growth doesn't have a ton of removal on its other end. You just rely on creatures and really brute forcing things. So Potion of Resistance is an excellent counter to what uh, growth tries to do. Let's see here. I can possibly play the Mangy Crimson Bull. I could play another Vader. This veteran's probably going to eat it. So it's kind of a tough spot to be in right now. I do, just, I do elect to play the Mangy and the Vetter down here. It's not really the best situation to be in, but I'm going to try and do as much damage as I can. Maybe I should have went ahead and played or moved the Vetter down there to where he's protected because I could have taken out an idol there. So that's a mistake. Two of his idols are down to one health. said I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. Especially when he gets a... Uh, Especially when he gets a second Grave Lock Elder out. Especially when one of them has a Potion of Resistance. So Hell Spitter Mortar up there. So he's defending his territory. Doing some damage to me. Knocking out my creatures. All in all being a nice guy. I don't really need the Vetter this time. And there's a Quake in my pocket. I could be in a position where I need to Quake. Right now the Wolf Brother is uh, going to have to be my Meat Shield. And I could Bear Palm here just to try and make him beefier. That's what I do. Of course, if he has a Violent Dispersal, that won't do me a lot of good. Like I said, I do have a Quake that's not going to solve my uh, Gravelock Elder problem. But there we go. Violent Dispersal takes out the Brother Wolf. That was what I was fearing. Because now he's going to be able to just take out my Veteran. And even though I have one damage left to do on that Idol, I'm just not getting it done. So all of my guys are going to attack. The Quake's going to probably hurt me more than help me. And two Ranger's Banes are not exactly what I want. I elected like Ranger Bane the Dust Runner and the Scatter Gunner. Maybe in hindsight I really should have Baned the uh, Gravelock Elders. But I do get some things here. Does he still have the Potion of Resistance? No, he doesn't. So I can do three damage to him. I can actually... So I'm actually going to do five damage. Almost kill him. Get another Wolf out. And if, he, if I can somehow survive this, and I probably won't... The next turn, I can play the Mangy, but from the looks of how I've played this at this point, all these wolves are going to die and my Mangy's not going to have as good of a time. Especially when he can bombard. So all ranged units get a cooldown reduced by two. So how many of my units did he kill? All of them. So that is a great play by Landmark, a good card at the right time, and I am back to square oh shit. Once again, I can possibly take out an idol. And I do have a veteran that I can try and play. I have a ragged wolf I can try and play. But at this point, it's just kind of desperation. Both of these guys only have one health. If he can get out a third grave lock, uh, he'd be in better shape. And if I just managed to poison those other guys, then maybe I'd be in there. But for now, I don't have a lot of direct damage. And there's the third grave lock elder. Oh. And two of them are now at two health. So I really need some other stuff and maybe... The triple elder bullshit draws what he says. I say I'll fix it. And that's where maybe you do have to quake. And then I can put the kinfolk brave down afterwards. He'll die before he can do anything. Maybe. I decide to tuck him in the corner. 
And there's not too much else for me to do here other than hope that he can't somehow insta-give me. And apparently I made an error, and he's going to correct it by going ahead and moving my guy the wrong way and actually burning me all the way down. So yeah, what was my error back then? I don't know. Probably facing this guy to begin with. So, he has a mortar up. He has a lot of units up. What if he killed one of my units? No, not that time. But right now he can do a ton of idle damage and there's not a lot I can do about it. I do need creatures. I get another Great Wolf, so that means I've been through most all of my hand. But unfortunately, I can only play one creature right now. And it is possible that he may just be able to start mowing through me. Because he does have six cards and nine energy. So there we go, another Gravelock Elder. So he's been through his deck too. And this is where you can start to feel it right away. Just the, you are going to die and there's nothing you can do about it. So Land Marco has gotten really good control of the board. He's taken advantage of my inability, or he's taken advantage of being able to remove my creatures. And right now there's not too much I can do other than say, hey look, I got an idol. Isn't that fun? Ping. So there's one down. Notice that Gravelock Elder is up to four health. So I do ask him how's he going to clear my board this turn, and in fact, there's probably not a lot he has to do here other than just get some scrolls, see what he can get Scatter Gunner. If he has another Bombard, he could GG this, but he gets a Dust Runner out instead, so. Oh, there's the Bombard! Alright, so there he is actually clearing my board. And there's... <laughs> One Hell Spitter, almost two Hell Spitter hits, and there is how many idols down this turn? Just one, but it's not long now. So my board's cleared, I have an Unleash Inner Power. I can play Sister of the Fox. And there's the Rallying that would have possibly saved me, the God Hands. Not being so much, because they're kind of expensive. So he can pretty much own me this turn, more than likely. If not this turn, next turn. So he does just play some cards. He has all kinds of stuff out there. No Quake. I don't think Quake's going to save me. I do Desperation Rumble. Wee, that didn't work. So let's see here. I could Rally. I could Kinfolk Veteran. I could do any number of things. But he's just going to be able to take out my stuff. And for some reason, I elect to not attack his Copper Automaton. I think at this one, I'm just like, ah, I'm dead. There's a lot of things I could have played, but there's the Inferno Blast, and there's the GG from my end, as he probably has another Bombard to take out something. Or there we go, Concentrate Fire, which is going to allow him to attack twice. So two of my idols are gone, and that's my series against Land Marco. We went 1-1. It's nice that I was able to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I just got the upper hand the first time and never let go, and the second time, Land Marco, with his Dust Runner, with a lot of his creatures, was able to control what I tried to do and was able to knock me out. So we split even the series. My current record is five and three in the latter league, which is around where I was hoping to be at this point, but I'll have more matches as they come along. But otherwise, for now, this is Way to Fail with Scrolls. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all next time.